Hey, good afternoon, everybody. Jim Warren with TechSapa. Glad to have you here on Everyday Asphalt. This program is designed to go a little bit deeper in the areas of materials, design, construction, and maintenance, and that's what our focus is. We take these programs and we put them on our YouTube site. So if you go to our YouTube site right here, right behind Mike, uh, we have a playlist that'll be right there. If you like, subscribe, and share, you will be notified of these programs when they pop up. This program is, is on, is on we, we do this on a Thursday. It should be up by Friday. So if you like and subscribe today, you'll be notified. Then you can come up and you can share it with your friends. So welcome everybody. Today's uh, guest today is Mike Ariano. He's Deputy Desi deputy District Engineer for Correct. Austin. Yes. Uh, welcome. Thanks. Thanks for having Glad me. Glad to have you here. Hey, Mike, uh, for those that don't know you, would you mind kind of giving a little bit of introduction, kind of, you know, where you're from, where you went to school, uh, you know, how long you've been with TechStot, hobbies, et cetera? Sure. Real quick. So, Mike Ariano, I'm originally from El Paso, Texas. Uh, came to Central Texas because I went to school at the best school in the world, uh, University of Texas at Austin. <laughs> and like most El Pasoans, you know, once you come here, you stay here because you got used to like water and trees and stuff. <laughs> We were out there a couple of weeks ago. I said, "You're right. It's a <laughs> no, long drive." Don't get me wrong. I, I love my, I love my hometown and stuff. But uh, anyway, so graduated from UT. Actually, as an undergrad, worked for CTR in the oh, research out area. Okay. okay. Uh, little known fact: I'm more of trained as a geotech, but then kind of got you're you a know, dirt jock. Yeah, I'm All a right, dirt guy. Awesome. And All so, right. but working at, working at Textile, I got exposed to pavement, you know, design. From a subgrade standpoint, sure, under absolutely. Moon One, where it's most important. Yeah, you Moon start One at the bottom. Moon One was my first supervisor, so that's how I kind of became more of a more of a payment engineer. Okay. Back in the day, and so, so when you came to Austin, you stayed. I stayed. I've okay. been here ever since. Okay. okay. Ever okay. since 1991. Wow. Okay. Yeah. Awesome. So uh, with that, I, I, you know, that's kind of how. So I, originally, I was an undergrad researcher for the university. They contracted me out to TechStot. Uh, okay. I loved it. Stayed. Been here for 27 years. And they hooked into you. And I, and I got and I got hooked. Wow. Like, yeah. And you're, so, you're, you're, an, you're 27. You're you're officially an old guy now. I am the old guy. <laughs> <laughs> I wake up and I'm like, I am. Am I the, the senior guy in this room? And so, it, I mean, I don't feel old, but yeah, I'm I'm the old guy now. Well, there's so many young people, so many new people coming in. Yeah. Yeah. And I mean, that's part of our big challenge moving yeah. forward with this is there's so many new people coming in is we got to figure out how to educate them. I know you told me the other day you, you used to do classes and you're going to start those up again. with Yeah, the and so one exciting thing in, in my job as deputy uh, district engineer, I'm over all the EITs. So I have all the young kids coming in. Okay. And so... Uh, great opportunity. Well, great opportunity, yeah, right? And so absolutely. every year we take them out to the field on, a, on, a, on an overlay job, I give them homework. Good. They know they know how, they know how to calculate a balanced you know training you know, okay. paving train okay. and the whole thing and so we're, we want to make sure that in the Austin district we keep our our pavement IQ high up and awesome. so uh, me and Tommy Blackmore used to do like a supplemental one B for our new inspectors Good you know deal. they know all the all the calculations that you know, after their one B certification but yeah. practical things like what do you do first thing oh you call the plant you know just right. lead them through a whole day and right. so. Anyways, I uh, originally started with the construction division. Okay. And I was at the materials, what is now material, actually it was materials test division when I first came there. And I switched. Became construction division, now it's back. Now it's back. And so, uh, which is good. Anyways, but uh, but I was a geotech classically and I, I actually worked more of the bridge division back then when bridges and slopes and stuff went down. Okay. But I kept on going and, and you know, okay. supporting on the payment side. But uh, then when the uh, materials and payment engineer opened up in the Austin district, that's when I came in 2006. Okay. I believe. Okay. And so that's when I started getting, and I was all about payments. Then you were yeah, deep diving. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Absolutely. And after that, <laughs> I became the uh, district maintenance engineer, then director of maintenance, director of operations. And Just kind of working your way. Yeah, you know, okay. when you're the old guy and you stick around, sometimes <laughs> those things kind of happen <laughs> somewhere, you know? And so anyways, that's kind of been my, my, my uh, career to this point. Good deal. Good deal. So we want to talk a little bit about what's happening in Austin here yeah. as, as a frame of reference for the discussion today. Now every, you know, as you said, Texas is a big state. Mm -hmm. El Paso, that's a day to get there. Yes. You know, and so, and then you got a half a day to get to the other side. So it, it's, there's a lot of areas in here and we deal with a lot of different materials, but today we're gonna talk about what y'all are doing here. Sure. So, um, wanted to get into a little bit of detail. We pulled this off the internet. So this is this is off TechStot's website. You can kick, click down here and you click on the district profile and you get to see some specifics as to 
this population, that ought to have a ticker on it that's just like... Yeah, <laughs> like you know like at uh, Times Square they got the national yeah, debt? exactly. They should have the same thing going. Because <laughs> <laughs> just, just being back here for three and a half years now, I, the, I live in Kyle. It has just exploded. Yes. Hayes County has just exploded. So Hayes County, Williamson County, and I think Bastrop's right behind it is, are the th sort of three uh, fastest growing counties in the country. Really? And so that you're exactly right. There should be a ticker because wow. if, you, if you hear the stats and you believe them, 1,100 people move here every day. Wow. So and that okay. translates a little over 600 cars. So you can add that to the, <laughs> that, the, that the daily vi vehicles miles. Yeah, we, this ought to be a graph instead of a number. Yeah. Year by yeah, year. Yeah. But anyway, I mean, looking at this square miles, you've got a lot of lanes, that you've got a lot of roads to take care of. But yeah. this number just kind of like, oh, my God. Yeah, so th th that, those daily mile vehicles traveled are is growing at the highest rate in the, in the state. So that just kind of just you know, complements that, that stat of the, all the people driving yeah, here. Yeah, because it's, it's not all the people driving, but then we're building new buildings, we're building new businesses, they're building, you know, all that infrastructure, bringing all that yeah. Amazon stuff to everybody's houses and all the stuff associated with that. It's the impact on the economy yes. and on the roads is crazy. And so with all the people or all the businesses, like you said, yeah. Tesla, I mean, Apple, Google, they're all, we're becoming like the epicenter for technology, mm -hmm. but along with it, they're still freight associated with it, trucking. Oh, yeah. And so the, the, not, so the percentage of trucks, which is not reflected in there, is, is increasing quite a bit, too. Yeah, I think Hayes County is becoming the tilt wall construction capital of the world. Yeah. I mean, it's <laughs> yeah. got so many tilt wall buildings just right outside the wall, right across the street, we got <laughs> stuff coming up. So anyway, so you got a lot of people, a lot of Texan employees yeah, here yeah, as well. So yeah. you got to, there's a lot of stuff to keep up with. Absolutely. Good deal. So let's keep going here. I wanted to kind of get into a little bit, um, before we really kind of hit the top uh, in this process, I want to talk about what you guys are doing. Okay. And I know you guys have got a very extensive, I've read through and looked at your SOP yeah. and it's extensive. And yeah. I think that's good because it gives its direction. You got mm -hmm. all these new people coming in. What do I do? Well, here's some directions. Here's yeah. how we do things. And so looking at your material selection guide, I just kind of wanted to hover around this for a couple minutes and just say, you know, you know, the state is so different when you move from area to area and we've got all these different mixed designs here compared to other states, which might have two, you know, yeah. we've got six. Yeah. Um, and then we've got, you know, different sizes, different binders, et cetera. There's a lot of options here. How did you get to here? How did you get to this point? Well, it's interesting. When I first came here, like everything was two inches of type C and under seal, right? Okay. And then B. So you yeah, C and a B. Okay. Which is great. It's but simple. It's simple. <laughs> but, you know, with time, and we're talking about all this growth, and mm -hmm. we're talking about shortage of materials, and you combine all those different things, you need a much more dynamic solution and, and wider palette of solutions to address specific situations. Right. And so that's kind of how this evolved over time. Okay. And so, you know, we've always had our bees, but then we've always... We didn't, we used to have the C's right on top of the B's, and that was mm -hmm. the writing surface. Well, okay. now we're using those D's as that intermediate layer, okay. and we can go into a little bit when we start talking about loading, okay. as, as you know, those layers of stiffness to basically withstand all that loading. Okay. And, and so every structure you're going to see has a B and a D layer to it, and that's okay. more of our structural layers. Now, the surface layers have different functions, and, right. and we'll talk about that a little right. bit. But and we have you've gone, these are your, your surface layers here. If you can slide just out of the way, sure. or, or take a one step, okay? So we got PFCs, SMAs, and TOMs. That's kind of your, correct. those are your surface options yep. uh, in, in the big scheme of things. And all they're all 7622, BG70s, and they're all SAC A material. Yep. So that's, that's the, that's, that's, premium, a, that's premium. premium. Yeah, right. and so over time, we, we so let me discuss that. So we, we used to have a lot of dense grade on the surface. Uh, when I was a payment engineer and I was responsible for looking at our wet weather program, mm -hmm. uh, one thing I looked at was how long do could we sustain a serviceable amount of skid mm -hmm. resistance mm -hmm. over time? And, and again, the more cars, the more wear. Sure. And so that that goes it's kind of like the the tootsie pop, right? How many looks does it take to get to the middle, right? <laughs> and so, but that tootsie pop wasn't lasting very long. Okay. And so we we started engineering these. And so, on top of that, back in the day, that's when we had 
you know, we have these feast and famine years, right? Absolutely. So we we're talking rap and raz yep. back then. Yep. yep. And, you know. It's, and we had some issues. And we had some issues. Had some and, you issues. know, the, we, we tried, went, we we tried went, our best. We went over. I think I think we can all, all understand that it, we went overboard that last big evolution of it. I yeah. wasn't here, but I, I knew it was happening. Um, and... Uh, now we're paying. Uh, the the thing that the thing I've always remembered because I've worked in a number of different states is is the DOT has a long memory. Yeah. When they have a problem. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> they don't forget. Yeah. And so, you know, so I think it it ha it's some in some cases then it gives certain materials and we'll talk about that later mm -hmm. a bad a bad name. Yeah. You know, so I don't want to use that anymore. We did that in '78. You know, yeah. we had a problem. It's like, well, things are different. Yeah. So anyway, so, so, so going back to these mixes, you know, SMA has always been our go-to okay. on, on an interstate heavy loading situation, energy sector traffic mm -hmm. payments, PSC where we need safety and yep. we have continuous flow of traffic. I love PSC. And, and have yep. you know, like the hill country, you know, mm -hmm. we have all these curves, high speed. Like 1431 was like one of the first we ever did. Okay. And back in the day, Dale Rand did all the studies on that and okay. show all the all the reduction in fatalities. Mm -hmm. But then we started looking at our surface mixtures. So Tom is kind of our go-to surface for general purpose, right? Okay. Used to be our type Ds and Cs, right? And so for two things, you know, back in the day when we were really trying to make rap and rest work, we had this opportunity of these grade five stockpiles just everywhere. We kind of made this material, right? This mm -hmm. is. It was kind of a mad science experiment, and it's actually a very simple mix, but it, it solved screenings and asphalt. Yeah, essentially, and, and it's grade five screenings and asphalt, right? But but the the thing about that is that you were using an available material, correct? That didn't really have another use at the time. Yes. So that's just good engineering. Yeah. That's good civil engineering using yeah. using what you've got locally. Yeah, that, I mean, to the best of your ability. That I mean, Tommy Blackmore just like being in the lab messing around, <laughs> and, and so. Uh, <laughs> And so, so it sort of it accomplished two things at the time. It, it gave us a viable mix that had the sustainability and the longevity that okay. we needed. Sure. So, because we were getting all the cracking and deterioration in the overly you know recycled surface layers, it's, but more importantly, it gave us friction mm. that was sustainable for the life of the of the over And overlay. we got to have friction. And so, when we combined these three mixes and we we adopted in about I think it was two thousand eight two thousand nine a high friction surface policy in okay. our design SOP. Okay. We reduced our wet weather fatalities by 45 percent. Whoa! That translates anywhere from 25 to 28 lives saved a year. Wow! So it only made sense. So we well, yeah, we, we we just hardwired that into that table. So sold. Yes. <laughs> so we we get safety and sustainability of life out okay. of the pavement with with this matrix here. Okay. Got it. Got it. Awesome. Awesome. And I'll pull this down as well. This is. Uh, Kind of your typical sections that that you come up with. Now there's new construction. There's there's rehab. I didn't pull that one in here, but you kind of see what's going on here. You've got uh, two different types. Again, you you kind of you're setting the standard as to the type of type of materials that you want to use based on your experience. And there's your there's your D over a B, mm -hmm. as you said right there. And there it is again. Um, is that a permeability issue, or what what why why the D over the B? Instead of a C over a B. So what we're trying to do here is actually have a gradient of stiffness, right? Right. And, and so, so, so as that load, that load distributes down. Correct. Right. And so you want to have that natural transition. When we had our, our C's and D's right over a B, mm -hmm. you, you start having a very big difference in, in stiffness. Oh, the delta between. Yeah. So that deflection, okay. you know, from a cracking standpoint, can, okay, it Too can much fatigue strain. over time, okay. right? Gotcha. So you want to have a nice gradual. So actually, that Tom mix and that SMA inch for inch. Mm -hmm. Tom is about is structurally equivalent to that uh, SMA. Okay. And that's your everyday, you know, mix, right? Okay. So when you go do your payment design, you're going to assign those two layers the same 600 to 650 okay. KSI. KSI. Okay. It's just, it's just one that's just thinner oh, than the other. Okay. So okay. that can dampen a lot of the stress at the surface. That way, spread it out. It spreads it lower out. Lower it. Right? So when we get down to here, we're not, we're not yeah. over stressing it. Okay. And the other thing with a D layer, it actually helps give uniformity. Sure. So if you have a uh, you know a dense graded over a B layer, that B and you know it's it's coarse and mm -hmm. it's, it can be segregated in areas and, and you don't and it's hard to not do that right with a, right. especially well, it's, it's a three quarter inch rock right yeah and so yeah. You, if you don't have that even support again you start getting localized just you know distress so that D helps smooth out okay. and even out those those loadings that way you don't have that differential and all that variability okay I like that I yeah. like that. 
And then you use, you're using kind of your bonding, you're not really using tack per se, you're, you've gone to heavier applications uh, for your inner layers. Correct. Instead of tack, why? So one thing we, we, we've learned really fast with thin overlays, they're wonderful if they're stuck to the pavement. Not so much, <laughs> it's, it's like having a carpet on a hardwood floor otherwise. With no pad. With no pad. Right. And, and so we- When we, you stop, you slide. And we knew that early on, and we yeah. went over, I mean, we were doing like, you know, AR binder, you know, under seals, and mm -hmm. we slowly started, you know, you know, going, you know, having our mis matrix get right. more and more risk. Right. And so this is an evolution of, you know, high end, Okay. AC, you know, PG64 type stuff yeah. to where we have our, our bonding courses. These okay. Days. With the right with the right heavier rate, make sure we're getting stuff stuck together so it doesn't slide or slip or cause problems like that. And also if you don't have that bond, the distribution of that of that load, yeah. it's gone. It just blows it apart. Yeah. Because now all your load gets transferred to one layer and then mm -hmm. that fails pretty quickly. Correct. Absolutely. Awesome. Awesome. This is your mixed surface selection map. Yeah. Okay. Now I like maps. I like things that are very simple, and I can kind of see. Okay, this is where I want stuff. So, walk walk me through it a little bit. So you got a big area to cover. So there's a table that shows you all the criteria that goes into this one map. It's all about percent trucks, ADT, okay. pavement conditions, okay. subgrade conditions. So okay. all these di all these different matrix okay. that go around that. And so you can see. Uh, I think I'm covering the table. There you go. So I go this way. There it is. Yeah. So the blues are, are definitely our seal coat, rural areas, mm -hmm. no doubt. Uh, thin overlays are, are your orange, PSC is your green, and SMA is your, I guess it's a pink looking thing, and okay. then the dreaded, you know, concrete down there, right? Yeah. Wow. And so as you can see, <laughs> <laughs> so what's funny, if we, if we could show the very first map, okay. it was a lot more blue. Oh, I bet. And so like you, as you can see, the urban sprawl as and all the growth, sure. we're, we're having to go to hot mix. Sure. Sure, and so, sure. as you can imagine, that's a larger cost, and 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 so, uh, but this is a really good reference map for our designers when they're okay. putting plans together. That there is no question in their mind, what type of mix and what pay item they have to put in in their plans. So it's so you're you're not having to do as much of when you're reviewing designs, going, oh no, you did not, and, and all that sort of deal. They know ahead of time that this route has got that mix on it. Correct. And the good you thing know. over time is our map, our reality is reflecting this map. Sure. And so. How often does this change? We look at it every year. Oh, every year. Because okay. there, there's definitely that, the ADT factor to oh, it. Oh, sure. And sure. percent trucks. Yep. And yep. That, that's what I'm saying. As that grows, that, that orange is sprawling out, and you're going to start seeing the, the PSCs and SMAs take a larger. Gotcha. Gotcha. Uh, gotcha. Role and all that. Well, that makes sense. Well, that's a, and that's in your, S, that's in the. Austin District SOP, if you go to their website and to go down to the bottom, I think it's under reports. Correct. And click down there under, under flexible pavement design SOP, this is in the append, one of the appendices. Correct. So if you want to look at it and get it yourself and take a, take a hard look. Now, I know we've spent, I know this is one of your, one of your things. Yeah. Okay. And because uh, and I think every time I talk to you, this topic comes up. Yep. about traffic, loading, all the stuff we've just talked about, mm -hmm. the increase, the amount of people coming in, the impact on the infrastructure, the impact on the whole environment and everything else in Texas and specifically in this area has, has made you really start thinking, mm -hmm. I guess for a number of years now, what's happening on the roads and what you're seeing when you're looking at your, your roadway evaluations and your ADT and your WIM sites and everything else. Correct. So, Explain. So the second thing, the cardinal rule is loading. The first one's always drainage, right? right. When it comes to payment design. Water, water, water. Yep. But second is loading. And yep. we design around payment response. And okay. so what that loading is on top and how it, so it, it's a very simple That's graphic, very simple. But yeah. there's a lot that goes into it, right? Sure. Sure. Tire pressure, tire uh, air, yep. contact pressure, yep. con configuration of axles, and yep. all those kind of things. Yep. Spacing, and, yep. And so historically, you know, we, we design payments dynamically because mm -hmm. we load and unload. So these days, those loads are getting much heavier. So if you start thinking about, so considering how COVID had such a psychological effect on loading, and I'll, oh, sure. and I'll explain that because yeah. we're, we're short on CDL drivers. All right. 
the supply the, the supply the supply chain is really you know kind of compromised at this point. Right. So there's a big temptation to overload every load. They're going to get as much they're, into that truck they're as they pack possibly it, can. Yeah, and then to that freight, they're going to put as much as they can. So we've seen that in our wind stations to where, like an I-35, almost there's almost 12 to 15 percent overloaded illegal unpermitted roads. So that ten, to over 10 percent, 12 percent. Correct. Wow. So I mean, and and from a pavement design perspective, an over design that additional load is not a not an additional bit of damage. It's a whole bunch. Yeah. It's not linear. Yeah. <laughs> and so even in our in our payment design uh, SOP, right. we, we account for an over, so right. we're not going to consider every load legal, and so right. we have a little percentage of a, to kind of raise our level okay. of, of certainty. You're tweaking your So now we're going to have to really increase that. So what does that happen? Well, that translates us to bigger B layers. Mm-hmm. Because we got to get that foundation right, bigger that, and that thicker. Inner layer, yeah, that, that way. inner web. Yeah. yeah. But the problem is it's still that much load at the surface. And you got to be able to withstand distribute that. that down without it deforming. Where it contacts, it's still going to experience that overload. Right. And so, and then the second problem with it is everybody's in congestion. Yeah, 35 so is the poster. congestion. Hot oh, 35 is the poster child for congestion. <laughs> <laughs> Outside is the torture test. So, summer. Congestion, overload. Yeah, uh, the worst on basically Slow, the worst conditions. Yeah. For a viscoelastic material, it's the worst condition, yeah. right? Just like in a, it's, it, there be our interstate are becoming uh, the stop bars. Yeah, at the intersections where you typically have the worst loadings. But yeah. now, we it's just it's. I mean, inter, I thirty five is right out there. Yeah, and every day it's just yeah. And so with that, I mean, we have to react and evolve in how we design our materials, right? Because mm -hmm. the, the payment response is telling us our, our layers aren't stiff enough anymore. Okay. Even though we thought we, they're pretty darn stiff, those loads keep on increasing. So I'll, I'll add another thing that we've been talking about lately. Uh, autonomous vehicles. Yeah. Yeah. yeah they're yeah. heavy. Yep. Their tire pressures are high. More importantly, if self-driving freight gets to the point where they start platooning, Two, three, four, and that's you know, coming. So, and that's self-driving freight is it's here. It's already here. It's here. Okay. It, it's on one thirty and I thirty-five today. Okay. But they're single trucks. But the second they start getting connected, and you have this caravan of, of freight, it's no longer loading dynamically. It's static because it's continuously loading. It's all. I'm just pressing down the whole time. And we've never really looked at how. And your what, wonder changes too, as well. Yeah, so Can. so they're yeah. autonomous. They're they're straight. Yeah. So it's gonna start looking like the the buggy ruts over there in Pennsylvania. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you're right. You know, I mean, right. seriously. Yeah. I mean, right. so the, those. I mean, the trucks are what really damages our, mm -hmm. our roadways. You know, not the little Teslas and you know, right. stuff like that, but those trucks. So those are the things we're gonna have to start anticipating and projecting what the effect is gonna be on and how we just start designing our materials. And I think that's that is the that, I think that's one of the key takeaways that we've got to start thinking about is not today, not how we did stuff 20 years ago, but what we're going to be doing for tomorrow. And, you know, been down to Laredo, been down to Del Rio, and you look at the loads and the traffic coming northbound, and it ain't, it ain't 20% trucks, it's 95% trucks, mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, and you're going, oh my God, and we've been now we've talked to some of the folks down there, and they're like, they're seeing easels just, I don't know, you know, 80, 100 million, over 100 million easels, and, and, and these overloaded trucks coming across, and then they're transloading them, and then coming up, and that's pavement. I mean, that's, mm -hmm. that's I mean, it's it's hard on any kind of pavement. So they, we just, you know, let the South Project on I-35 yeah. a yep. few months ago. Yep. When we were doing the original pavement design, I said, as I was reviewing it, I'm like, go re-look at this. I, I've never seen easels this high. Yeah. We're talking over 200, 300 million easels. Really? Yeah, in a 30-year design. I mean, that's craziness. Oh, wow. Okay. That's nuts. That is crazy. And it was like, oh, my gosh. So when we see those things, we're like, okay, we're going to have to go back to the drawing board and make these and, and figure out how we're going to address that. So it's a di we're, in a, we're, in a new, we're in a new game. Yes. We're in a new game. So I think that's important to, to understand as well. In, in, in certain parts of the state, um, we just, we've got to do stuff different. We've got a, a much higher demand on our, on our materials, on our aggregates, on our binders, and that's making changes that's it's creating, I mean, 
Because what's the alternative? The alternative is not to do flexible payments. And we kind of like flexible payments around here. <laughs> so, this is correct. Um, so we, we, we've got to be able to figure out how we can adapt our materials to care of that. And, I, you know, I don't think it's, it's, it's any easier on the concrete pavements easier. No, well, because you talked about Laredo. There's concrete slabs. They, although they're old, are being shattered by the same yeah. trucking. Yeah, yeah. It's it, you, you just get to the point. It's just crazy. Um, well, awesome. So we've kind of been through what Austin Zoo and how Austin this the Central Texas area is growing. Uh, why they're doing what they're doing. We're talking about kind of where we're going. Okay, and I wanted to talk a little bit about this. Um, this is wrap. This is reclaimed asphalt pavement that comes out of the road. And uh, I know it's a huge state and different districts have got different philosophies and requirements that they put on, on their specifications and on their materials. Uh, we talked earlier about, you know, when one of, one of those low times we were like, hey, what can we do to think, make things more economical? So I, I believe we probably went overboard a little bit with some of the efforts to try to put more wrap and RAS and that kind of stuff, when we ended up having an issue. Mm -hmm. I think we all admit that. And in, in many districts, they just said no more wrap. You know, there's a nine or 10 districts that just don't allow recycle. And I think that is long-term is gonna be a challenge. I mean, I look at it from a couple different ways. And, and one of the things we've been talking about here, because we're hearing it nationally, is the word sustainability. And you mentioned it earlier. Sustainable, there's sustainability can come in a lot of different forms, Correct. right? You know, it's not just be, okay, I'm gonna recycle my plastic cup. Mm -hmm. If I can make something last longer, mm -hmm. that's really sustainable because now I don't have to replace it as often. But I think one of the things that we've got out here, this is a resource mm -hmm. for us. And uh, I want, my, my goal is to figure out how to use this stuff responsibly in as many different products as we can, responsibly, where we're, we're not decreasing the quality. We're, the quality is as good or better than, which would save money because now we're not having to haul it because it's already there, okay? Yeah. And then, then that all becomes sustainable just by itself. Um, they've heard the word EPDs, which we probably need to do a show on sometime. And that has a lot to do with where your materials are and how far they're coming and the energy involved in all that and the kind of materials you're working with. And so that's a, that's a, a quantifier in the sustainability world. But what's your thought as to figuring out maybe how to, how to do a better job as we move forward? Because I know we've had some challenges even here lately on SAC A materials. Mm -hmm. um, I know Fuji, uh, Zawa with uh, TTI has done some work um, looking at uh, the skid resistance of, of RAP. And there's a report, I think it came out sometime last year, um, uh, that said, hey, you can make it work. Mm -hmm. So what's your thought? So counter pop relief, I've always liked recycled asphalt, okay. especially done in the right situation. So sustainability has two shades of green. Yes, sir. There's definitely the environmental part, but there's also the mon monetary part. Correct. So with all the variables that we just talked about, we're still going to have to do everything within a constrained budget, right? Yep. So we got to yep. look at wrap and we got to look at recycled asphalt. So I'm a big fan first of all in structural layers okay forever we've been doing in the austin district and, and of course depending on the situation so like energy sector yeah we're the least known energy sector district in the world because we we when we we're proactive and we used a lot of wrap in our base layers okay so in our tar type b's we're talking 20 30 40 percent we okay. even humored 50 percent at one time we're like that ah, that's yeah. not that crazy yeah because then you could do it in the lab, but how reliably you're going to be able to in the field. Still so make it, we yeah. stopped at 40, but when you start, so we actually had TTI look at, you know, when you start looking at the, the, the permanent deformation and the resilient modules you can get out of it and the credit you can get, mm -hmm. you can make very stiff bead layers. What does that do for you? It makes your egg, it, it can withhold a lot more right. load. Right. But secondly, it's kind of like an offensive line. If your offensive line's great, your quarterback and your running back has to be average. So everything above it <laughs> doesn't have to be a superstar, right? Right. So we focused. I was so, a guard in high school. <laughs> I was I was a right guard too. So <laughs> there you go, <laughs> brother. <laughs> and so we don't, and they don't know we're there unless we have a penalty, right? Exa or unless you trip and knock somebody over, the wrong person over. Yeah. 
and which nobody I, knows the which type. Which I did. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Uh, so, so, so those surface mixes and intermediate mixes don't have to be superstars. And we've put so much effort mm. on our surfaces and even intermediate layers that if we get that B layer right, mm -hmm. the the reliability of those other upper layers becomes stronger. So I'm a big. It works. It all works together. Yeah. And it so again, together. it's all pavement response, right? Right. So we right. can engineer our materials to get us the payment response we want, okay. we can kind of back into that. So I definitely think there's a huge market for Bs and D layers that, that are on those intermediate okay. base layers. Okay. Uh, we've done 40% wrap in our shoulders, okay. 935. Yep. Lasts forever, especially with warm mix additives. We, I mean, we engineered mm -hmm. you know, the crap out of it. Right. And so, but that's the thing about wrap and recycled asphalt. If we do our homework, we could probably use, give it more exposure and how we use it mm -hmm. a lot more. We even used it in under seals back, yeah. back in the day. Yeah, we're like you know. Stop. Yeah, Chuck Fuller said he meant he, he yeah. said they 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 took this they took the wrap material, which has got it's a graded material. It's either you know three quarters of zero or half to zero, depending on what mix it is. And if you just crush it till it's all ha minus half inch, but then you put another sieve in there and you mm -hmm. split that material out, you can take that coarse fraction and the fine fraction and separate those out, and now you've got two different materials. And so you could have a material that could work as a seal coat aggregate yep. that's already pre-coated. Yeah. <laughs> so, so the more we fractionate and the more we can differentiate the properties, mm -hmm. the more reliable engineering properties we can actually engineer into whatever mix, even a surface mix. I agree. And, and I agree. so, and, and then we, we got to start measuring those properties. Up. Yeah, we got to yeah. start measuring the properties. We got to start, again, differentiating all the different type of materials in that wrap and mm -hmm. fractionating it. We're going to have to engineer it. If we engineer it, we can probably use it in any layer. Okay. There you go. There you go. There you go. Well, good deal. Good deal. Um, I mean, that's that's you, you answered. But what other areas should we be looking at as far as you know, the binder mixes? What, what else do you think from a from a user perspective that industry should? Hey, we need this. Build. We need to come up with something to do that. So when we start talking, you know, what our our future problems and having in interfacing with those high stress situations mm -hmm. and high loads. We're still going to have to interface with the surface, right? And so, what things we're looking at are, you know, high polymer, uh, right? Highly H polymerized binders, yeah, yeah. Because those that has to be a fairly stiff surface. Yep. Uh, preserving the good properties of our binder. Mm -hmm. You know, we're looking at warm mix and yep. trying to incentivize that yep. because if we cook all the good properties out through the plant, what's the use? And so we're we're already behind the eight ball if we do a lot of that. And you know, I get it, there's long haul distances and we wanna make sure we have that opportunity of compaction. Mm -hmm. The great thing about our bread and butter mixes, and especially PSE and Tom, we don't do air voids necessarily. And so so the compaction window, it's, it's important, but not as important if you have, you know, thicker, you know, dense graded yeah. mixes or SMAs and stuff. So in those situations, okay. we should never really be cooking in too, too, too high. And so uh, those are two things I would really like to see going forward. Okay. Just to, and we've already made an agreement yeah. to we're gonna we're working yeah. on that. So yeah. And, and yeah. so uh, I heard some new innovations on how to figure out oxidation and cracking. Uh, and so those are the kind of things we're gonna have to do the research on. Okay. Start with basics. Yep. And then start looking at new materials. We've got to start looking at plastics. Yeah. You know, I mean, I've seen some pretty good research on that. There's there's a, a landfill full full of them. Yeah. So it's plentiful. But if we can engineer that, I mean, that's a whole new area to help modification and, and stiffening those binders. Yep. And my, my only caveat there mm -hmm. would be that, that, and somebody mentioned it again the other day, it, it, it's, I'm kind of an old guy too. They used to say, you know, back when recycling had made an, a big kick at 20, 25 years ago, some of 30, 30 years ago, people were wanting to put everything in asphalt. They mm -hmm. wanted to put toilets in asphalt. They wanted to put glass and asphalt. They wanted to put, you know, everything in asphalt. But I think one of the things that we have to be, sulfur was a was a deal that they wanted to put in asphalt. And each of these things by themselves can be, uh, can have physical properties that could be uh, suitable that are appealing. Mm -hmm. But we also got to look at the un the potential unintended consequences. Mm -hmm. Plastics is a big one right now. That, like Plastics is like the new, mm -hmm. the new thing, but there's also, we got to look at how that stuff wears, and there's a thing called nanoplastics that can wear off, and that can get into the water system, and mm -hmm. and so everything has got benefits, but you also you got to look at the whole cycle because we don't want to end up being 
you know, end up putting a, you know, layer of asphalt down, but then we can't do anything with it when we're done with it because it's got something in it that we can't touch anymore. So yeah. that's, uh, that's something from our perspective, from a industry spec perspective that we're always, hey, yeah, it looks good, but hey, let's make, let's look at the whole picture. Yep. You know, because when people are selling stuff, they go, they're only going to sell you the, <laughs> this side of it, but you got to kind of look at the other, you got to look at both sides of it. And that's kind of some of the stuff that we do. Well, so with talking about that, and yeah. so we've, we've experimented with uh, interlayer reinforcement okay. using polyester grids yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And on our, some of our energy sector roadways. So the first one we did was a new N77, big haul route, heavy trucks, did a two inch D, uh, overlay had some control sections, put strain gauges. Okay. And if you look at the strain levels, so it, if you did a straight out design, it would require four and a half inches for a structural overlay. Okay. We just put two with that with that grid. The grid, okay. And so, but we also did some areas with the four and a half that we were. So you, you got control, you got the whole. So we, yeah. we evaluated the whole thing. And so that grid was equivalent and not better than that. So it's kind of, just consider it like a, a snowshoe. Yeah. We're just distributing that, that load. So sure. I was, and we've done glass grids and stuff like that, but this probably is the best one because then we went to go mill it and it milled. Okay. So talking okay. about going back into a layer that you can't yeah. go back to. Yep. So yep. then, so then to, with the success of that, we went to State Highway 21. Okay. And we, so there we, we try to hedge our risk, right? So we're like, we're not going to put it on, on right under the, the surface, but we're going to put it underneath the intermediate layer. So. That one was like supposed to be like five and a half inches mm -hmm. intersector out, right? Mm -hmm. Again, we got to protect our money because right. we, we have a constraint, right? Sure. And so we, we put that grid on top, underneath the two inches of D with a tom on top. We went back and looked at structurally. It was the equivalent of doing that five five and a half inches of hoppix. I know y'all don't want to hear that out there, right. but this is the kind of stuff that you're gonna have, we're gonna have to look at for flexible pavements mm -hmm. to survive this kind of loading. Okay. Okay. Good deal. Good deal. All right, wrapping up here. Got two more questions. You know they're coming. Okay. okay. What keeps you up at night? Getting a two o'clock in the morning call about mm. our crews. Oh, I, sure. You know, when I was over a director, I, whenever that. You I was, don't never, never call, I, them calls at night. Are I hope it good. was a asphalt plant down. I never. I hope it wasn't one of our employees in a unsafe situation. But yeah. safety is always what keeps me awake, yep. Not, uh, whether it's our employees or the public. Yep. And that's something we, we're continue pushing. And if, if you guys have got the ability, and everybody does, to talk to your friends, talk to your neighbors about, we're, we're talking to Chuck yesterday, he was doing a safety brief. If, if we would just make sure everybody's buckled up, we would save a hell of a lot. 40% 40, 40 of the of fatalities are due to not buckling up. There's like another a third of that due to people that are distracted. So your phones, your you know, doing your makeup and doing your phone and kitting the kid in the back seat all at the same time. Not a good idea when you're driving. So um, we've got to just pay attention when we're out there. We've got so many people out there so close together. I'm seeing just crazy people driving, thinking that their erratic driving is going to make them get home any sooner than anybody else is. Yep. And I saw it yesterday going home and it's like, <laughs> I hope you got an organ donor card, buddy, because it's just, you know, it's just You'd be amazed. Crazy. A very small, po po small portion of the population are the ones that don't wear seatbelts, but they're a vast majority of fatalities. Yeah. So if that, if that mean, would happen overnight. How long have seatbelts around? Seatbelts? 40 years, you know? The best police are my kids. Yeah. <laughs> they're like, Dad. I'm like, hey, sorry. Yeah. Yeah. yeah I mean, we, we, we trained ours from, we've always worn seatbelts. Yeah. But... but um, even if you're, our, our, when I was young, if you were slow getting your seatbelt on. That's the thing, I was slow. Yeah, he's so like, he's like. <laughs> oh yeah, they'd love to point out that. <laughs> All right, last question. Go make you king for the day. You okay. get to make any change that you want. Oh, good Lord. It, it, sounds, it sounds pretty uh, ridiculous, but I hate bureaucracies. Okay. And so what's funny is I've worked for, for one for, for 27 for, years. Yeah, almost 30 years, yeah. I, you know, I think there's so many ways we could become so more efficient if we had better ways to contract, better ways to mm. deliver. We could innovate better. So, could be more so I have a bunch of thoughts in my head okay. of how, how I do that. That'll and be another show. That'll be a completely different <laughs> show. 
<laughs> and we would save so much more money and get things delivered quicker. But yeah, I'll probably get in trouble if I have even said about it. But. All right. Well, good deal. Well, once you, once you ever, if you ever decide to retire, then we can do the show. Then they, <laughs> then they can't kick you out. You can buy the book. There, buy, there you go. We write the book. There you go. Awesome. Or the YouTube. Yeah. Um, so, hey, that's it for today. We really appreciate you being on live with us or being uh, on, the, on the recording with us as well. Um, remember, these programs are on our YouTube, will be on our YouTube site. Um, check out, check under the playlist there and uh, take a look there. Uh, next month, uh, we're going to do something on construction. Again, it's on the third Thursday at 3 o'clock. That's our time um, that we do these programs for you guys. So we, we appreciate everybody paying attention. So in the meantime, uh, be safe, number one. Uh, but, uh, Take it easy, de-stress a little bit, and make sure we're making good asphalt. So have a great day, everybody. Take care. Goodbye.